Hello, and welcome back to Tips and Time Savers. I'm Danny Rocks. Learning how to distinguish between the data that you type into a cell and how that data is displayed is one of the keys to understanding how Excel works. Let me give you an example. Let's switch over to this worksheet. And this is an exercise that I frequently use in class when I'm teaching Excel to a group of students. Aside from the labels that I have in row 1 and the labels that I have in row 3, this appears at first glance to be a blank worksheet. So I'll ask the class to select cell A4 and type in the number 1, 2, 3 and press either Enter or Control Enter. Most people in the class are surprised to see that they typed in 1, 2, 3, but something different is displayed, in this case a date, May the 2nd. 1900. So frequently they'll go back and say, well, I probably didn't understand correctly. I'll press delete, and this time I'll type in 321. Enter or control enter. A different date. And they swear I typed in 321 and I typed in 123 the first time. What the heck happened? Well, if you come over here to the home tab of the ribbon, Notice over here in the numbers group, when we look at the formatting for this cell, it's saying that we have the cell formatted to display as a date. So using the drop down menu, we can see that changing the format is going to change how our data that we typed in or the data that we pasted into a cell is going to be displayed. Now if I come back here and if I change the formatting to general. Now general formatting is the default formatting when you open up a brand new blank Excel workbook. So now what we typed in 321 is displayed. Let's come back here and put in the short date formatting. Now people will say, well, how does this how does Excel know which date to display when I type in 321? Well, let's go back and type in the number 1. And what's displayed, because again, remember we're using the short date formatting, is January the 1st, 1900. Day 1, the number 1 is stored for cell A4 for this worksheet. But day 1 has a meaning to Excel. That is the first day that Excel began keeping track of time. So if I type in 2, that's going to give me, because I have the formatting for this cell as date, short date, January the 2nd, 1900. Here's a keyboard shortcut that will enter the current date. Control semicolon. So January the 12th, 2012 is today's date. If I come back in here and I look at it, format it in the general default formatting, I see that I have 40,920. So what I type in, the number that I type in, is what actually is being stored for this cell in Excel but we can choose to have it displayed using a variety of formats. Now let me make a selection of these cells, A5 down through A10, and I'll use 1, 2, 3, and then again, I remember I selected multiple cells ahead of time, so if I press Control enter that data gets entered in each of the cells. So notice the variety of formatting that I have over there. Now, what I recommend that you do, the key to this lesson is to understand that we have a very useful tool available to us. Home tab of the ribbon, come over here to the editing group, and notice that there's a drop-down menu next to the clear command. Notice that we can choose to clear the formats, which is what I'm going to do, or we could clear the contents. The contents are the data that we type in. The contents are the data that we paste into a cell or into a range of cells. Or we could choose to clear all. In other words, scrub clean our selection. So when we make a selection, the cells that I've selected, and let me come back here and I'll select all of these cells. Come over here, clear, and from the drop down, I want to clear the formats. So now you see that the content remains in place, but the formatting has been stripped away. And I could come back and I could change the formatting to be a short date. So distinguishing between what is stored in Excel, what you type in or what you paste into a cell, and the different formatting that is in place for the cell is something that you need to learn how to take control over. And simply pressing delete does not change the formatting. One, two, three, typing it in, I removed 
a step before I removed the content, but I did not remove the formatting. In order to remove the formatting, make your selection, come over to the clear command and choose in this case to clear the formats. So now when I have a selection, one, two, three, control enter, there you go. Now this command is, is an essential command. It's so important to me that I actually added it onto my quick access toolbar. You can do that with any command or any command group. Simply right mouse click the command or the command group and say add to the quick access toolbar. Now let's come over here and take a look at the cells that I have in this selection from C4 through C10. Once again, I'll use Control Enter to enter one, two, three in each of those cells. And look, it looks like a ransom note. Look at the variety of font colors. Some are bold, some are italic, some are using a larger font, some are using a smaller font. It, it's a it's a mishmash. And again, pressing delete will not change this. Type 555, and you have different content, but the formatting remained in place. So remember, I've added the clear command to my quick access toolbar in this case when I come in and say clear the formats now the content is all that remains in there likewise oh I didn't mean to do that let me come back and switch back here quick little advertisement in there for my DVD let's come back here and go into alignment in this case I'll do one two three and look at all those various alignments in there now I also have conditional formatting and data validation. Notice what happens when, in this case, I'll type in 555. You see I have a shading that is applied in here. Now let me change one of these numbers to 1, 2, 3. In this case, the shading went away. I'll change this to 55. So why does the shading appear in some cells and not in the other? Well, that's as a result of conditional formatting. Conditional formatting, in this case, I set this exercise up to highlight the cells that match a rule, a match a rule that is greater than 200. For any cells that have a value that's greater than 200, then apply this light green background shading. Now, we can easily spot all of the cells that have conditional formatting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the selection 1, 2, 3, Control, Enter. And now, if I come over to the Home tab of the ribbon, editing group notice that there's a fill, find and select command over here and notice that I've also added that to my quick access toolbar select go to special and then the go to special dialog box conditional formatting when I click OK it's going to highlight all of the cells in this worksheet that contain conditional formatting again remember with conditional formatting I use the rule so the rule that I used was to highlight the cells that are greater than a value. So in this case, I want the value to be values that are greater than 500, and then choose the type of fill that you wish. So there. So now notice that this cell is not greater than 500, 501, and now that conditional format it is in place. How about data validation? Let's type in 123 over here, and notice that I get an error message because I've applied data validation to this cell. The data validation is to only accept entries that are less than 100. So typing 555 is going to bring up an error because it does not match the data validation rule. Remember we have find and select over here, go to special, and in this case I want to see all the cells in this worksheet that have a data validation rule applied. Click OK. So now all of those cells are highlighted. Now I could come back here into the data tab on the ribbon and what I want to do in this case is come over here to data validation and I want to clear the rule. So here is my rule for the settings except the whole number that is less than 100. So let's clear all and click OK. Likewise with conditional format I could make my selection and remember to take advantage of the go to special dialog box. Remember to clear a rule select the cells that you wish to clear first. So here are the cells that contain conditional formatting. Now home tab of the ribbon conditional formatting. What I want to do is I want to clear the rules from the selected cells. So without 
realizing that there could be underlying formatting, we could have a mishmash over here. So let me just delete the cells, which deletes the content, does not delete the underlying formatting. One, two, three, control enter, and there you go. I have a mishmash. So learning how to take advantage of the drop down command next to the clear command and clear the formatting from your selected cells will help you to have a good clean start. Now there is one other element that I want to bring your attention to. Let's come over here in the clear formatting. And again, this appears to be a blank worksheet. Let's bring up the go to special dialog box. And one of the other commands over here is the last cell. Click OK, click OK. And you see it's going to take me all the way down in this case to cell Z34. Now, why is that the last cell? Because somebody had left bold formatting in place. So maybe you're, re you're reusing a worksheet that you used last month or last year, or a client or a colleague sent you this worksheet. So you're going to run into trouble unless you learn how to clear the data. So let me introduce you to the, the concept of selecting all of the cells in the worksheet. One quick way to do that is to click this button. So above the number 1 and to the left of the letter A, now I have all of the cells in the worksheet selected. And if I come over here and if I say clear the formats, now all of the formatting has been removed. The content remains in place. And now I've removed the possibility of having some stray formatting that remained from a previous use of this worksheet. So as I accidentally uh, clicked on uh, my, my online shopping cart, I introduce you to my best-selling DVD, The 50 Best Tips for Excel 2007, 50 lessons just like this, and it also includes the practice worksheet. So I'll look for you in the next lesson.